welcome to the 42nd annual Sun and Fun International Convention and Fly-In here at the Lakeland Lender Regional Airport. I'm Ben Coleman, one of your hosts here at the Florida Aviation Network, and we are viewed here and listened to on www.floridaaviationnetwork.com. That's kind of tricky, but uh, floridaaviationnetwork.com, and we are a group of volunteers that come on behalf of the National Aviation Safety Foundation to bring you informative, compelling, uh, educational uh, information on aviation. And the reason we do this is to try and expand your safety envelope. Uh, safety is what it's all about in this industry. Integrity, safety, uh, dependability, durability, and uh, uh, Mike uh, Dukorski, Mark Dukorski is the epitome of durable flight instruction, and uh, he is a welcome to uh, this show Thank here, you, Mark. <coughs> Mike Z is one of your counterpart. Yes, Mark sir. D is uh, the flight instructor side of the house. Yes, sir. Mark, what got you involved with the, uh, and I've noticed here on your uh, little logo here, the Lakeland Aero Club. How, how did you come across the Lakeland Aero Club? Yeah, great question. Uh, Lakeland Aero Club was uh, an entity that was started by Mr. James Ray and by uh, a gentleman by the name of Rick Garcia mm -hmm. from Gulf Coast Avionics. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the initial idea was to put together uh, an entity which could serve youth and help bring youth into aviation. Um, thankfully for uh, a gentleman by the name of Mr. James Ray and um, the help of Sun and Fun and other great people, we have been lucky enough to be able to take it to the next level. And I'm lucky enough to be chairman of the organization. And um, all we're trying to do is a uh, simple thing, uh, bring youth into aviation, uh, bring some airmanship skills to that youth, perhaps some good citizenry along the way and uh, hands-on uh, hands skills with uh, restoring classic aircraft. Uh, the youth, the young adults do all the work. Uh, it's all done under the supervision of an IA. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for example, the young adults uh, completely refurbished a 1953 L-19 Cub, Super Cub. And uh, that included doing all the fabric work, uh, repowering it, and so forth. And uh, Mike Z's an integral part of that. And we sort of believe in the let them make mistakes and let them fix their mistakes mm -hmm. type of thing. For example, um, the engine came off on and off about six times. Uh, first time they forgot to put the mags on and it went from there. Mm -hmm. But they learned a lot along the way, mm -hmm. and they learned that if you don't do the fabric right, it's going to have to come off and get redone. Mm -hmm. So um, we're very lucky to be part of uh, such a thing, to be able to bring youth into aviation and so forth. And the flying club aspect, you are a flight instructor. I guess you're the lead or chief flight instructor? or uh, Yes, yes sir. It is broken down into that... Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. have any other flight instructors here with you right now? Uh, we do. We have uh, <coughs> two other flight instructors. We're not really a commercial entity. We're a 501c3 not-for-profit organization. And um, we've got a uh, couple of uh, young adults, actually young adults who were uh, James C. Ray scholarship recipients mm -hmm. that started out, one of them started out with a uh, ride and a glider and that later blossomed into uh, receiving a scholarship for his private pilot certificate. Mm. And uh, after he received his private, uh, matter of fact, both of the young men, uh, they continued on and uh, got additional certificates and ratings and became flight instructors. And now they're coming back to the club uh, to uh, help give back some. Good, good. That's where it should be. Absolutely. And uh, I hope that you're able to duplicate what you've done over the years in other locations, not only in Florida, but uh, the country and the world for that matter. Cause <coughs> yeah, well, we'd certainly like to, but obviously our focus is very, very much uh, on our um, uh, sort of premier location here on the Sun and Fun campus, 
uh, and uh, we've got our hands full. Uh, we've got uh, a glider, we've got two cubs with a third one coming online shortly. Um, the AOPA representative for the area was nice enough to uh, loan us his Cessna 150. Uh, we have a light sport that was donated by uh, Dr. Case, uh, who is an AME in the area. So we've got all the tools, we've got the building, now we just need to make it all happen. And uh, we had our ribbon cutting uh, for our new building the day before yesterday, I think it was. It's all happening so quick. And um, it was, uh, it, it's really something. And uh, probably something that everyone should see is watching a young lady or a young man solo an aircraft and uh, watch the smiles on their face and it's a serious smile though as they're dripping with sweat <laughs> um, but it's uh it's second to none to be able to participate in something mm -hmm. like that and then watch them continue on and receive their private pilot certification and, and earn it it's not something you just walk into and help them become head and shoulders above perhaps competition for a job down the line sure yeah, I like, I like to hear people when they talk about, yeah, so-and-so gave me my license. <clears throat> he didn't give it to you. You, you earned it. You worked for it. And uh, they yeah. may just been the one that actually made sure you went through that last hoop. But, uh, uh, Mark, the uh, uh, you congratulations. I know that you uh, were the winner uh, of the regional uh, flight instructor of the year for the GA Awards. Yes, sir, I and was. And that's, that's, that's quite an honor. Uh, it's and an incredible honor, and I can tell you that although I got the label, uh, I would never have been able to get there by myself. A lot of other people helped me get there, and um, you can't do anything yourself if you're going to achieve. No, that's true. And uh, part of one of the uh, things that you got with that, uh, that package, if you will, you get a, uh, a ride in an uh, air van. A Gips Aero Air Van, yes. GA8 Air Van. Looking forward to that. And you should very well, because I work for the uh, company. Oh, look at that. And I'll probably be the guy giving you your ride. Really? <laughs> so That's excellent. Well, uh, I've heard a lot of good things oh, about it, and I'm very much looking forward to the ride. And I'm hoping that if we go, that maybe I can get some stick time in it at the same time. Well, the, here's what I was going to tell you. I was going to expand on how this is going to happen. Great. Is uh, I'll give you a very, very thorough, detailed walk around. Okay. And basically an hour of ground on the airplane. The Looking systems forward to it. And uh, the, its capabilities. Um, and <coughs> I'm going to set you in the left seat. Okay. And uh, you will be, uh, I'll be pilot in command, but you will be getting your uh, your feet wet in the, in the, in the air van. How cool and is that? And we'll actually call that a, a, a factory checkout. That would be great. I'm so, really uh, looking forward to it. Where is it? The, uh, this is going to be here at Lakeland. We're going to bring the airplane here to Lakeland uh, oh, nice. to pick you up. And uh, we, we're out of demonstrators right now or else we would have already done it. We've sold out and uh, these aircraft are made in Australia. That's a good place to be, sold out. Oh, it is. It, well, it, it is unless you have uh, other folks that would like to see the airplane, like oh. you. Uh, but it's a, it's, it's a Bush airplane, high performance, and uh, we'll let you know, uh, sit behind that big uh, six-cylinder to Lycoming, short takeoff and landing aircraft, and very maneuverable. It's, uh, it's just about as maneuverable as that Cub you got sitting over there, but it's a yeah. 4,200-pound airplane. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. So it's uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. How'd you get involved with it? Uh, luck of the draw, timing is everything. I was uh, up at an AOPA convention and happened to notice uh, a friend of mine sitting under the wing of one, and uh, we worked together back at Piper. And he said, Ben, we're looking for a mechanic uh, that can also fly the airplane and uh, do some demos, and uh, we need to be responsible for the Americas. And I said, hmm, let me think, if I can think of anybody that could fit that bill, uh, why don't you <laughs> hire me? That and, was uh, and so That was it, tough? Oh, it was tough. But uh, <clears throat> it's a great way as, as I get into, eventually, once I grow up, I am going to look for a sunset career. And yeah. uh, I'd like for this to be it. But um, You have to grow up first, though. I, I refuse to grow up, but I may have to grow up if this is going to be my sunset. 
Well, uh, the company, Mahindra, should be absolutely commended for supporting general aviation because um, not enough people care enough to do that. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to be able to continue to uh, put um, good pilots in the left seat, uh, we need the support of companies like Mahindra, and we're lucky to have them. Well, it's a big company, and uh, <clears throat> they specialize in tractors. I've heard I've heard it advertised on uh, on TV. The Mahindra tractors. And people say, are they the same people that make the tractor? Well, this is kind of a tractor in disguise. Okay. A tractor with wings. One way to put it. Yep. And, uh, and 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 the company really is very very supportive, and uh, we will set that up with you at some point in the next I'd say month or so. Uh, Whatever uh, works for you. Though. I know where you are. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> And uh, as a matter time. of fact, when we bring the airplane in, we'll bring it in on the grass strip. And uh, oh, that'd be cool. We only need a thousand feet to get in and out. Well, so you, you've uh, got that. And I'm sure the students will be around. And uh, I'm sure we could lasso up a whole bunch of students to be there. Might even uh, there might even be a couple because we got room for six more behind us. Well, that's okay, but that means that some of them might watch me flying, and that's not good. <laughs> well. The, uh, that's right, as a flight instructor, you don't really have to do anything but I, sit there and I watch. usually just sit there and complain, so <laughs> I don't really get to fly that much. So if you're going to put a whole bunch of kids in the back, maybe we'll let you fly so I make a fool out of myself. No, I'm going to be sitting in the right seat. Anything go wrong with it. Mark, man, you shouldn't have done that. Okay, mm -hmm. well, blame it on Mark. <laughs> sure, no, I'll take it. No, and, and actually the air airplane is so uh, uh, forgiving. Uh, it's It's... Uh, been certified to the latest standards okay and that's one thing a lot of people don't realize is uh, and I know this is not a plug for Mahindra but I'll take any chance I get uh, a lot of the airplanes are grandfathered in mm -hmm. for uh, certification to part 23 mm -hmm. right. and it may have been certified to the latest standards in 1965 but standards have changed and uh, so this airplane has been uh, you know from the seat crash worthiness to the fuel system, the electronics, everything has been to the latest standards. So, uh, and it makes a difference. You'll and notice a difference. And what's uh, what's its primary market? Market is it's medium cargo. Okay. Uh, skydiving uh, and uh, bush airplane, missionary groups. Uh, there's 30 of the aircraft operating in Africa now in Botswana, and we have them. Have you been there with one of them? I have not been to Botswana. Botswana. But uh, I've been to, uh, we have 40 of them working out in uh, MAF in uh, Australia, really? a Missionary Aviation Fellowship. And uh, it's, it's a really neat little airplane. You're going to enjoy it. You're going to want one. I'm looking forward to and it. And the school may have to have one to, to move things around coming and going. Well, you never know. You never know. But the, the nice part about it, though, is, is that if we can get the youth interested in it, mm -hmm. um, it will help them a lot, and that could help the company a lot. Well, the Civil Air Patrols operate in 16 of them. Really? And, uh, across the country. That's great. Yeah, and well, a lot of people don't realize that. Lakeland Aero Club, love to have you. Well, we'll be there. Uh, tell us what is coming up in the future. You, I know you have some uh, spare uh, uh, additional instructors. You got two additional instructors. The Lakeland Aero Club, we have uh, we have two instructors currently, far from full time. Um, Again, our focus is more of quality versus quantity. We're obviously not an, an airplane mill, uh, I'm sorry, an airman mill, nor do we uh, uh, want to be that. Um, we've got, with the variety of aircraft that we have and the focus on tailwheel aircraft, conventional aircraft, um, it's truly our hope that, uh, that we can really instill some good airmanship along the way. And, and to us, that means um, disciplined use of judgment, skills and risk assessment mm -hmm. to make a uh, consistent, safe, accurate flight. Uh, and, and that's one of our key objectives. Mark, what's your capacity over there? Because uh, at, at some point in time, you're gonna get to the point where, okay, we, we've got to hold them back. We, we're, we have yeah. too many, there's no more, the, the inn is full, our, our, uh, our days are full, uh, we're, we have no more staff, we have no more physical location to put them. Where does that happen? It'll, it will probably happen pretty rapidly, and that's fine with us because once that happens, we're satisfied at that point in time. We're not trying to build the biggest, but we're definitely trying to be the best. And um, 
it's a, it's a great opportunity uh, for the youth uh, to be able to be part of it. And uh, it's the whole place now that we have our own facility, it's, it's sort of an electric atmosphere. And, and we've got, uh, you know, kids coming in about that big uh, to just walk around and sit in the Cubs and, and so forth. And uh, we've even got members as young as 14 and uh, shortly we'll have our glider operation going. So uh, the best pilots I've ever turned out were pilots that, were, that I started or other people started in gliders and then you continue on to conventional tailwheel aircraft and uh, complete their private pilot certification in that. It's all about energy management. Absolutely about energy management. I yeah. guess you've done that before. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I love glider flying. Oh, do you? Oh yeah. Well, we'll just, have to go. It just scares the heck out of me because I don't feel any rumbling going on up in the front. Oh, that's peaceful. That's good <laughs> rumbling, <laughs> energy management, and a heck of a lot of fun. And when you get good at it, you can stop the air, have the aircraft run out of energy within a two or three foot. It, it is. It is. Uh, I spent a lot of time with Sean Knickerbocker. Okay. Up at the uh, Seminole Lake. Seminole and, Lake. Uh, well, he, he really enjoys it too. He's got beautiful machines up there. Uh, but anyway, uh, what's your capacity as far as students over there now? 30, well, 40, 50? Uh, that's a good question. If you figure that most of the students get out of school, let's call it 1.30. So, uh, especially in the summertime, uh, Florida, thunderstorms kind of cut into the afternoon some. Mm -hmm. So I suppose if you had to figure it out, uh, we've got two Cubs about to get a third, which will be a tow plane, but will also be able to be used for training. Mm -hmm. uh, a light sport. Um, we have uh, at our use a, a super decathlon to help the, the young adults learn upset recovery. Uh, maybe we'll be lucky and convince Patty Wagstaff to come in and help our kids out a little bit. So I would say that if you figure that you could get two students per plane per afternoon, you're looking at mm, probably a capacity of about 23 to 27, mm -hmm. but that's just not the way we think. Mm -hmm. we, we just want to make quality and uh, make it a, uh, a great life experience that will help open up opportunities that perhaps uh, these youth otherwise wouldn't have had. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I have no doubt that's going to be the case. Uh, yourself, I know that you come up, uh, uh, you've been in aviation for a while. Yeah. And uh, thousands of hours, yeah. I think we developed the other day, uh, six, seven, eight thousand? Uh, probably about seven thousand hours of dual and ground instruction given and mm -hmm. probably had another couple or few more for just flying around or uh, I used to travel extensively in North America and spent a lot of time doing that as well, mm -hmm. as well as flight instruction. How long has Lakeland been your home here? Um, well, actually, um, I'm in Lakeland about three and a half weeks out of the month. I'm lucky enough to have a lovely wife that lives down in Sarasota, Florida, and I get to mm -hmm. see her a few days out of the month uh, when I'm not up here. So if you want to call that home, mm -hmm. that's uh, sort of home, yet um, I'm up here 90 plus percent of the time and mm -hmm. pretty much enjoying every part of it. Well, you got a northern home and a southern home. Yeah. Uh, and and maybe Central Florida, South Florida. Yeah. Maybe you'll come over, Ben, and twist her arm and have her move up. Uh, you show me, uh, show me where the, the magic button is and I'll push it for you. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm cer certainly looking forward to that day. Well, and, uh, and uh, Lakeland does have a lot to offer. It does have a lot to yeah. offer. Um, obviously, we have sun and fun, and the whole campus here. But really, we're in Central Florida. This is this is the heart of aviation, at least to me. Mm -hmm. It's the mm -hmm. heart of aviation, and I think to a lot of other people. I know, as far as training goes, the uh, Orlando district alone accounts for over 20 percent of the certifications in the United States. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and the FISDO here, uh, you know, nothing against the other FISDOs, mm -hmm. but I will tell you, I have never worked with a better FISDO than this group of mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. because they just want to get things done. Mm -hmm. And they're great people to work with. They keep their word. And uh, I'm thrilled beyond belief to really be able to be part of it. Well, they, uh, being regulators, they're here to help support the, the industry. 
Well, they're they they're do doing well. a great job, but they go over and above. Yeah. And um, they've been great with our kids. Um, uh, we just can't say enough about them. And the uh, Mr. Ray, does he drop in from time to time, or uh, uh, yes, does he, uh, he kind of keep his his finger on the pulse? Uh, Mr. Ray uh, is uh, really. It's, am it's amazing that someone with uh, his depth of experience and all the things that he has going on, he gets down into the minutia of, well, we have to have that plane, that plane, and that plane all be yellow because we want them to match so that when they fly in formation together, it will look really cool. And yes, mm -hmm. absolutely, Mr. Ray. Uh, Mr. Ray's a big part of it. Um, we were lucky enough to have him here yesterday. He spent the morning with the... Uh, young adults over at the uh, Aero Club just sort of answering questions and talking about his traveling around the world in his Learjet mm -hmm. and uh, all that and he's a he's a great model citizen for all of them and mm -hmm. and it's certainly the the club and all of our hope that as some of these club members um, become successes in their own that they too will give back to aviation mm -hmm. as uh, as Mr. Ray has um, uh, which is a huge understatement. Yeah, he has uh, stood behind a, an awful lot of good things going on here in the area. And, and again, like you say, the role model. Uh, these, uh, these kids, I hope they appreciate how much they have going for them because there certainly wasn't anything like this when I was coming up in aviation. No. And, uh, and not that that's not all bad because We've got to be able to, to teach these guys and gals that if they want it bad enough, they're going to find a way to make it happen. Yes. And, uh, and this way, if they want it, it's here's the road. It's already been paved. All you've got to do is go down it. Uh, yes. And, and we like to tell them that uh, most of them are seeking private pilot certification now in a glider and previously in a powered aircraft and, and obviously we'll continue continue to do that but we, what we do like to say to them is you want an adult certificate you need to be an adult to have one mm -hmm. and uh, to see some of these uh, uh, young adults strive because I don't have to tell you it's, it's not a walk in the park mm -hmm. to get your private pilot certificate and you know they still many of them have their chores at home many of them have jobs mm -hmm. All of them are going to high school, uh, and they have other things that they're dealing with as well. So there's a lot going on in their lives, and uh, we try to help them see that there's probably nothing more important than aviation. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it's really a beautiful thing. Well, determination, dedication, uh, and, and they see that, I'm sure, exuded out through uh, their, their mentors and their uh, uh, idle figures, uh, and there's We're a lot just of idle coaches. figures. Uh, but walking around here at Sun and Fun, absolutely, a lot of idle figures walking around here. We're, we're lucky uh, we we are where we are, and um, we're just really coaches. We help point them in the right direction, mm -hmm. but they've got to do the heavy lifting. Um, mm -hmm. We're here to help, uh, but we're not here to hold their hands. They need to work hard at it. The uh, and, and I like your your adage there about uh, you know having an adult certificate. You gotta act like an adult. You do. Uh, and the speed factor, and once these kids get off in these airplanes, uh, we don't know what happens. They, they're, they're on their own. They gotta be responsible. And I was just uh, talking with one of our Colonel uh, Hardy with uh, Tuskegee Airmen. Okay. They turned these kids loose 19 years old to P-51 Mustang. With, what was it, 15 hours or something? <laughs> something ridiculous. Like yeah. That. But, uh, but I, I think it's great, uh, and I always uh, kind of chuckle to myself when I hear people say, uh, well, yeah, Johnny, uh, we, we're still trying to help him find out what to <coughs> do. And uh, I said, well, how old's Johnny? Oh, he's 30. <laughs> well, Mr. I, I, I hope that w that's encouragement for Johnnies out there that are 30, that it's still not too late to get, to get in the game. Uh, if you haven't figured out what you want to do, it's still a possibility to get jump into aviation clearly as you were saying uh, no mi mr. James Ray says it best I think and that is when uh, 
when a boy starts taxing out the solo and he's soloed, he comes back a man. And it, it's absolutely true. Well, that's great. Mark, I can't thank you enough for what you do here for the oh, group. I can't and thank you uh, enough for help bringing it all to light. And people like you and Mahindra and so forth help support general aviation. And we we all couldn't succeed without you. We're, uh, we're And we're not finished, either of us, oh, in our vocation. Absolutely. Thanks, Mark. And we're going to wrap up this interview and uh, look forward to another one here at Sun and Fun 2016. I'm Ben Coleman, one of your hosts, Florida Aviation Network. Take care.